So I'm often asked where I get uh, the inspiration for certain projects or where do I derive my creativity from. And honestly, I don't really take credit for any of that. I mean, I do make things that are cool and uh, not sound arrogant, but I do make things that are cool and turn a few heads. But then again, it's not me that comes up with the ideas. It is me, but it's not really me. Like The ideas come to me more so than I find them. And honestly, that's how I think it should be. It's a lot easier to find it. It's a lot easier for an idea to find you than it would be for you to find it. And that's how I come up with a bunch of these ideas and projects. Um, quite recently, we got a, a fan that you plugged into a wall and it had an infrared controller on it so you can like turn it on and off with a remote and also select modes. And that is what inspired me to make this project, a wireless reset for my router and modem. What it does is it allows you to push a button um, from any room in your house and it will reset your router and modem at the same time. This comes in handy if you're laying in bed and don't feel like getting up or just want to be lazy for the day um, and just really don't feel like getting interrupted um, laying down or trying to watch a movie and you don't want to get up and go unplug your router, wait a few seconds and plug it back in. This pretty much caters to pretty much caters to being lazy. And the reason why I got the idea from this fan is that I wanted to actually take the fan and rip it apart and see how it worked. Um, it was actually broken. Our dog knocked it over and broke one of the blades so it would hop. So I wanted to take this fan apart and see what made it see what controlled the uh, fan because obviously something had to control the 110 volts AC. So I took it apart. I tried incorporating this uh, this idea into it, but it just wouldn't work because um, the circuit I made, which is something similar to the one you see on the whiteboard, just would not cooperate with it. Uh, I tried controlling two buttons on the actual board itself um, with a high pulse and then with the low pulse, uh, just like the one you see right here. I tried controlling both of those using a few transistors, but it just would not work. And uh, I started looking for another option. Another reason why I wanted to look for another option was because it operated on infrared and uh, infrared is not that efficient for long distances so it only would have worked if I was sitting on my couch and decided to point it at it so I was left looking for another alternative and I, f I came up with this um, it's a 555 timer that pulses uh, it's a 555 timer in monostable mode that outputs a pulse of 24 seconds roughly um, it's, the timing components on it is a 220 microfarad capacitor, electrolytic, and then a 100K resistor, and that is roughly 24 seconds. Now, standard reset time for most routers and modems is a recommended 30 seconds, and I get, I am hoping to achieve a few more seconds tacked onto that from what we use for the wireless transmission part. Um, right here, the circuit you see on the whiteboard, it will actually work if you just have a button, and you can push the button and it'll reset without you actually having to unplug it and whatnot. But I wanted to take it a step further and make it wireless. And a cheap way of doing that was to hack a wireless doorbell. I'll show you that in the next clip. It's a wireless door chime I picked up from Walmart for like $11. Um, it operates on three, three batteries, that's 4.5 volts. And it's got a transmitter that operates on a little three volt coin cell battery, I presume. And um, my goal is to take that and hack it into my wireless transmission. Uh, it can operate over 150 feet, I think it said. So my router's in the middle of my apartment so I can access it from any room in my house. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's what's going to do the wireless transmission part. And right now I'm going to explain the circuit you see on the whiteboard a little bit better. Uh, Alright, so right, right up, uh, right here is the 555 timer circuit. Uh, very straightforward circuits, monostable. It operates on 5 volts, and then uh, if you follow the output of the circuit, which is right here, it'll go to a TIP32 transistor, and then above that are two relays. The relays are what's going to be controlling the modem and a router, actually interrupting it, rather. And uh, this will probably be best explained if I go through the entire circuit. So with the wireless doorbell, uh, let's say you push the button on the transmitter and the receiver receives that signal. The signal um, uh, the signal from the uh, tr receiver is actually going to be... I'm going to tap into the speaker part of the tra uh, receiver so we can get the speaker uh, to activate our transistor. And our transistor is... 
right here. So you push the button on the tra uh, transmitter, it receives it, and the sound comes out of the speaker. I intercept that sound and use it to activate this transistor. And what will happen is it'll, uh, it'll ground pin 2 of the 555 timer, which will then trigger the monostable output. Um, and uh, once the monostable output is triggered, it'll output a pulse of high high voltage, probably around 4 volts, and it'll last for 24 seconds, as you can see from right here, the pulse. It'll last for 24 seconds, and that pulse will then go through the pin 3, which is the output of the 555 timer, through that resistor, through the diode, and then to the base of the TIP32 transistor, which will then ground the power, which will then ground the coils on the uh, relays, which will then break the, which will then break the uh, contacts. I'm using normal clothes for the relays, which will break the contacts and then pretty much just turn off the router and modem until the pulse returns to low. Um, so that's the idea. It's a really simple circuit, and I'm using two power supplies for a reason. I could probably use one if I really search, but I have. I have a 5 volt power supply and uh, the relays I have operate on 9 volts and I tried hooking up a 555 timer to this 9 volt power supply I have and it just got way too hot so I decided to just use two different power supplies and ground them together. Um, it'll work better that way so I don't have to worry about the timer getting really hot and uh, components failing. Um, also I'm sure someone will ask why I did not use why I did not use uh, transistors to turn off the router and modem instead of relays. Um, I tried that actually. I tried controlling that, but the relay uh, transmit. Tra sorry about that. The uh, transistors I had got way too hot, and it would have failed eventually. So I went to the next best thing, which were relays. And like I said, I'm using normally closed relays. Um, relays have normally closed and normally open, along with a common pin and then the two coil pins. Um, I'm using normally closed, so that way the power supply will be connected at all times until the 555 timer monostable is triggered. So. Let's uh, jump right ahead to taking apart the wireless doorbell and we'll get started on the circuit. Get that breadboarded. Um, also, I will post a better picture of the schematic on uh, my Facebook page. I'll link that in the description so you can uh, download it or whatever, copy it, and use it for your own needs. And uh, we'll get, and uh, yeah, that should help out a lot because I'm pretty sure the whiteboard isn't all that clear, especially with my handwriting. Um, I did not explain a few components on the 555 timer side. That's only because I didn't really have to. I mean, you got the 220 microfarad capacitor and the 100K resistor are what determine the timing of the, of the monostable output, but there's also a few more resistors thrown in there and another capacitor. There's a capacitor on control voltage, which is pin 5 of the uh, 555 timer. Yeah, uh, there's a... 40 picofarad ceramic capacitor right on the pin 5, which is control voltage of the 555 timer. That helps out a bit. Then you have pin 4, which is reset. That's also to the high voltage. That helps out. And then uh, we have a resistor going from pin 2 to high as well. That helps pull the ground. We got a 1.5K resistor in there. So, yeah, so it's a really simple circuit and not a lot of parts involved in it, and it's pretty cheap. Um, I'm using a 2N3904 transistor for the switching of the tr uh, trigger pin, pin 2 to ground. Uh, it's a really relatively low signal, so I don't have to worry about that. But I needed to use a decently, a decent sized transistor for the coil switching, which is the TIP32 right up here. It's the only one I had on hand that would la that would work best. And pin 3, you can see resistor and a diode. The diode is needed because Without it, there would be some interference from the relay coils that would go into the output and mess with the signal and all that. So uh, diode is definitely needed and all the other components are needed. So if you want, this circuit's pretty much ready to copy. If you feel like you need more time messing around with the components, increase the capacitor value, and you should be good to go. You, sh you know, Maybe if you get a potentiometer on uh, pin 7 to 8, you can get a better timing as well. So let's jump to, the, to taking apart the doorbell and breadboarding it. Alright, so here is the doorbell uh, transmitter. It's going to be a really small circuit. I'm actually going to keep this thing intact and uh, just take it with me wherever I go that I think I'll be for a long enough time to want to reset my router. Here is the 3 volt battery it came with, which is good. Um, these things are kind of annoying. It's a CR2, CR2032 battery. Um, they're just annoying because you can't really find them everywhere, but it's not that big of a deal. should last a while. And here is the receiver. 
And like I said, ooh, some hardware. Don't need that. Uh, like I said, it operates on three batteries, which is 4.5 volts, uh, 1.5 times 3. Uh, 4.5 volts, so I'm going to use a 5 volt power supply for it, which is just a half volt over, so I don't expect much of an issue there. So I'm going to take that guy apart and then hook up the voltage to my um, power supply that is also powering the timer circuit and test it out. So it'd probably be wise to test it out before I took it apart, but eh, not how I roll. So let's get that going. It's a Phillips head screw bit. I'm not expecting a big circuit inside of this, I just think the enclosure is big. And it's not really a big deal. Also, I will go over the uh, circuit one more time at the end of this video to, to uh, pretty much re-describe it. So, because I know I talk fast and I kind of miss a few points. Alright, so... Oh yeah, it's a really, really tiny circuit. <laughs> Um, yeah, not that big at all, so let's get that going. Oh, uh, there's our two uh, positive and negative wires right there. Uh, so I have to get that. Actually, I'll just clip those and resolder it in a second. I need to worry about that. All right, so let's take it apart. And i got a few more screws here. It's actually labeled on the circuit board. I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in on this in a second once I get it taken apart. Also, if you're wondering, I picked this wireless doorbell up at uh, Walmart. It was only like eleven dollars. So there's your cheap alternative. And I know I could have used another means of transmission, but I just went with this because it was there. It was cheap, and uh, I like to hack things and mod them. So. That works out. So, let's just go in. It seems like it's stuck on something. There we go. And there is the speaker that plays the doorbell sounds. Um, I want to keep that intact right now so I can verify it's working before I further destroy it. It's glued in there pretty good. Quite a bit of force that took. All right, so there it is. Really tiny, let me zoom in on that. Let it focus. All right, so there it is. Really tiny circuit. Um, bunch of surface mount stuff on the back. Uh, two 4.5 volt wires, uh, the speaker, and then a little circuit right here, a little block top right here that I'm sure stores the audio files for uh, the doorbell because it said there's a few tunes you can select. So let's get this. Let's, um, let's join this to my power supply, which I will do right now. Let's join this to my power supply of my 555 timer and see if it works. So let me zoom back up. All right, so my 555 timer is right over there on the breadboard still. So we put that to ground. And if that, if that looks, um, yeah. Also, the polarity on this is correct, which is good. Because sometimes with products, they don't like to cater to polarity. So, um, let's see. Yep, so there's that. So let's get our transmitter set up real fast. So it needs the uh, battery inserted into it. Kind of a pain to open, but. We're getting there. There we go. Oh, wow. It actually pops up the entire circuit, so you have to insert the battery that way. Oh, that's different. So, yeah, you're not really messing around with much on this. Um, there's probably more than likely an integrated circuit on the back. 
So. All right, so let's see what we can do to get this going. So the battery is in. The time, the uh, transmitter is plugged in, or receiver is plugged in. So let me read the instructions real fast to see if it should be good to go or what, whatever. So one second, let me read the instructions. I hate reading instructions; they're pointless, except when you need to know something. All right, so it turns out that uh, I actually broke the speaker when I pried it out of the, its enclosure. So I got that figured out. Um, I disconnected a wire to the speaker when I pried it out with my flathead. You know, that was a pretty dumb move. Um, it works. I have my piezo speaker wired up instead. Should, should play the same sound, so uh, we'll test it out right now. Um, there's actually volume buttons on the receiver. So let's see. Volume would be... Even that way. Just want to figure out volume. All right, so uh, I don't know if you can hear that on camera. I'm gonna. There it goes again. So uh, let me figure it out the volume buttons real fast. And I get going. So volume would be this guy right here. Right here. Right It's probably just the piezo speaker, but it does work. Um, hopefully you can hear that. Um, should, it does work. I just broke the speaker like an idiot when I pried it apart. My bad. But let's see if I can tap into the signal from the speaker and use it to activate the ground for the for the uh, 555 timer, uh, for pin 2, actually. So let me get a transistor. I should have a few. I'm going to use a 213904. Alright, so I got the circuit on my breadboard. Zoom in a little bit. So I got the uh, circuit on my breadboard. It's not finalized to its fullest extent, but it's just right now a proof of concept. Um, right here. We have the 555 timer, all its components that I showed you on the whiteboard, and I will go over the schematic one more time, uh, over a clearer, clearer image of it, so you have that to look forward to. Right here is the 5 volts, these two alligator clips right up here, those are the 5 volt input for the timer. Uh, the timer's output goes to this LED as well as this resistor diode into the base of this transistor, the TIP32. Once the transistor is activated, it, it will ground the coils to its 9 volt power supply and activate the coil of the relay and push away the normally closed to the normally open position, which is what we want. It'll turn off the router until the monostable pulse is done. So, without further ado, I guess I'll test it out. Um, I ended up skipping, I ended up taking a piece of wire and soldering it to the receiver and just jumping it. So I didn't have to worry about that little yellow wire it came with. So that's what this is right here. So nothing more has been done other than that. Plus I jumped the power supply, and I'm on a bigger breadboard because I, I uh, I'm on a bigger breadboard because I felt it was necessary. I couldn't work on that tiny one up in the corner. So when I push the transmission, uh, the transmitter button, it'll transmit the signal, and then the receiver will receive it. And instead of playing the annoying doorbell sound, the uh, sound will travel. The, the signal for the sound will travel through my jumper wire to the resistor to the base of the transistor which will ground pin 2 of the timer which will then trigger the monostable output of the 555 timer which will then click the relay so you'll actually be able to hear the relay click the relay is right over here I'm going to be using two of them in the final product I could use one um, but I figured two would just be a lot easier and a little bit more safer I could actually control AC mains with these relays but I don't want to mess around with that because the pins on them are way too small so I don't want to accidentally touch anything, or I just want to avoid that. And I could also take both power supplies um, from the router and modem and tie their grounds together and control that as well. But like I said, I'm just going to use two relays instead of one because it's simpler, and plus I have them to spare, so I'm not really concerned about that. So I will push the button, the LED, which is right there, a little red LED I have in place, so you can see the monostable output will turn on and you'll hear the click of the relay. That click was the relay, not the button. 
You'll hear the click back of the relay once the 30 seconds is reached. I have proof I'm not pushing it. Alright, there it goes. And that was the click of the relay you heard. So that click would then allow the power supply for the router and modem to go back to the actual router and modem. So that is proof of concept of it working. So now I have to get all of this on a PCB. Uh, probably this one right here. All of it onto a PCB and then start jumping all the necessary connections and going from there. Should be should be relatively straightforward. And like I said, I will go over this uh, the schematic again, but with a better better image of it so I can show you it working again because the whiteboard probably won't show up all that well once I, on uh, my computer screen. So I'll just go over it again um, on a piece of paper to give you a better idea of how everything works and hopefully a better explanation. And uh, don't don't uh, uh, feel free to ask questions if you uh, if you're if you have any questions that need to be asked, feel free to ask them. I will try my best to answer them, and plus, hopefully, there's someone someone else might answer them in the comments as well. Um, like I said, if you want a longer or shorter duration of time, just mess around with the capacitor and resistor. Just change those values up a bit, or use the um, the formula for it. Or you can actually use an app. I have an app. Uh, it's Electronics something. I haven't used it in a while. Hope I still have it. Uh, Electronics Toolkit Pro. I use it, mainly used it for uh, resistor codes, but there's a few things on it. Um, there's a few things, there's a few more things on it other than resistor codes, which is like, uh, let me see if I can open it up real fast. Alright, so, yeah, the app is right here, Electronics Electronic Toolkit Pro. I bought it. It was like 99 cents, I think. Don't quote me on it. And ironically, I have a doorbell app. But that's just a mess with my dog. Uh, but yeah, you go to the app and then monostable. Oh, uh, 555 monostable circuits. And then uh, right here, you have the resistor value, capacitance value, and then the timing it'll give you. So I have a 100K resistor. K resistor, and then a 220 capacitor and the time is about 24 seconds like I said um, and uh, with the added components uh, from the the added signal that would normally go to the speaker of the receiver that helps give me a little bit more time uh, I'll actually time that right now it should be it should be right around 29 to 30 seconds so let's get that going As you heard in the previous clip, the doorbell sound, so that is what's going to prolong the the output of the timer, because it'll reset, it should hypothetically reset the uh, ground, the uh, t uh, two to ground with the transistor at the last peak of it, so, so we should get a few more seconds of time. Yeah, right around 31 seconds, so that's pretty cool, so that's perfect timing for it and I may add a piezo speaker to this whole thing so I can actually hear it working from a distance may not though because those are annoying as all hell um, I may just add a switch to it so right now I'm gonna go ahead and solder all this up and go from there should be relatively straightforward and I'll go over the schematic again then we will assemble everything in a case which I'm thinking for a case would be I don't really know. Like uh, I had this idea to use an old router case, so it, so it wouldn't look too out of place. Uh, my brother has a few of those. I might snag one. So uh, that would be kind of cool. Make it look like it's supposed to be there. So um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and solder this all up and go from there. So the 555 timer is now soldered to a PCB, along with all the other components, and uh, I've got it down to a relatively small compact size, and. I'm quite happy with the soldering on it. It looks pretty awesome. Um, I am sorry I didn't show this the whole thing being soldered because uh, ever since my How to Build an NES Portable, I decided to try to cut down the length of my videos to make them easier to watch. That video was three hours long and it involved quite a bit of soldering. But if you want to see 
more soldering or uh, like a quick, quick, uh, a fast forward of the soldering process, you know, just let me know and I might be able to add that into the next project. But here it is, all soldered up. We have the timer right here, timer circuit right here that uh, outputs the monostable pulse. And we have the doorbell receiver right here. The two relays that will control the router and modem once that part's going, and then the transmitter right here. Um, and I'll show you the circuit on a, a piece of paper, and I'll explain it again once more because my whiteboard probably didn't do a good job of it because it's kind of probably hard to see or whatever. So I'll test it out right now. It should pause. It should turn on for 30 seconds. I have a red LED right here to give a to give us a visual. And there's also a hearing aid too because uh, the relays actually have a click in them, like I've said before. So I'll push the button and it should emit for 30 seconds and then it should turn off. So yeah, it works. Um, it works. I got my uh, five volts going to a USB extender, which is going to my hub up on my wall, and uh, the nine volt power supply is right here for the relays. So all that's left to do is add the wires to the relays that'll go in between the power or ground of the router and modem, and then I'll show you the circuit. Um, I'll show you the circuit before you add the wires for the power. Or, uh, for the router and modem. Let's see if I can get. All right, there. That's pretty good visual, I guess. All right, so yeah, this is the circuit. Um, like I said before, it's relatively simple. The hardest part about it is probably hacking the wireless door chime, even though that's very straightforward. You just take the. You just take a wire. And uh, you're basically just taking the speaker, one of the speaker uh, wires, and adding it to a transistor to pin two. Really simple. Um, you can either you can actually breadboard it and just test it out before you finalize it, or just mess around with it. And also, this can be used to reset other things too. Um, I had this fun idea, like maybe somehow hooking one up to my brother's Xbox, and uh, when he's playing it, just walk by his house and push the button and piss him off. Like I thought that'd be kind of funny. Uh, so it has it has a few. A few adaptations with it. You can do whatever you want with it. It's pretty straightforward and relatively easy to make. So, again, I'll go over the circuit. Right here is the 555 timer. And then uh, the two components that make up the timing of the 555 uh, monostable output are the 220 microfarad capacitor and the 100K resistor. That equals about 24 seconds. But with the added input from the uh, speaker from the doorbell, it gives us a few more seconds. And... Um, it's relatively simple. There's not a lot of components used on the 555 timer part, so um, that's pretty easy to read. You have the 5 volts coming into pin 8. Pin 4 and 8 are connected. Uh, 4 is reset, but it goes high because it helps with resetting. And then uh, 7 and 6 are connected, and then there's a resistor from 7 to 8, a 100K resistor. And then there's a capacitor from 6 to ground, which is a 220, 220 microfarad. And then... On the output of the, not the output, on uh, pin 2, which is trigger, you have a 15K resistor going high to 5 volts, and then you have a 2N3904 transistor right here. Um, that's intercepting ground, so when, when the transistor is activated by the input signal, which is the output of the speaker from the wireless doorbell receiver, It'll activate and put pin two to ground, which will which will then start the monostable output, which will be this right here, a 30 second output of a high voltage. And there's also a 40 picofarad ceramic capacitor going to ground from pin five. I was going to use a different rating, but I couldn't find any more ceramic capacitors. I only have a few left, so I use that when it works fine. And then on the output, we have we have um, a red LED. Um, right here it says the 180 ohm resistor is going to ground, but it's actually reversed. Uh, the 180, 180 ohm resistor is actually before on the positive lead. I just did it that way because I didn't draw it in. 
Um, it works either way though. And then, uh, then after the LED, you have a 1.5K resistor, which goes to a diode, and then to the TIP32's base. Um, the diode is actually needed because um, you, I, I've actually gotten away with it a few times without using it, but when I was breadboarding it, I found that once the relays were activated, it would not reset. It, the, once the 30 seconds were reached, it would not turn off. Um, my guess is that there was some in, there was some interference between the uh, there was some interference between the nine nine of 14 volt power supply, so I just added the diode and it worked fine. Um, it was just a standard rectifier diode that I had lying around, so it wasn't anything um, too hard to come across. And then once the TIP32 is triggered, it grounds the nine of it grounds the relays to their power supply, which is the nine to 14 volts. And once the relays are grounded, the coils are energized, which pushes away, which pushes away the switch within the relays, which opens up the switch for 30 seconds, which will then disconnect the router and modem. So it's actually really, really simple, and like I said, I'm going to include a picture somewhere. Um, I'm probably going to post this on Hackaday, so I'll include a picture on that a little bit after this is uploaded. Uh, an easier to view schematic and probably a better explanation that you can read. And yeah, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And if I'm missing anything or if I'm confusing anyone, don't don't hesitate to ask questions or anything because um, to me it seems like it seems like it's really easy to like uh, to understand. So if there's any questions or any even comments, just go ahead and ask them or say them. Um, so right now I'm going to add the interception wires to the relay that will go in between the power supply of the router and modem. So that's to come. I gotta find some wire. All right, so we found this this piece of wire right here, amongst all my uh, wall warts that I have, and I'm gonna use it to add to the relays. It's pretty much the same wire that's probably used within the um, router and modem. It's stranded wire. It's D. It's from a DC output, so it's kind of the same. So I figured, I don't know, that amount of length should be more than enough to intercept the power supply. Still have no idea what I'm doing for a case on this. Alright, so on the relay, like I've said before, I'm using the normally closed pins. Um, so that way I can, so that way the router's on until the monostable's activated. So the normally closed pins are found easily with using a multimeter. You test for continuity on one of the pins. Um, you got common pin right here, then uh, this is normally closed and this pin's normally open. Really easy to find with the multimeter, just using a continuity setting. I gotta get a new multimeter too, because mine kind of sucks. I fried my old one, which I really love. I need a new one of those. I got a lot on my list to, of like buying soon. I want to get a 3D printer. Now, I was actually kind of against 3D printers for the most part. I mean, I still am, but they would be handy to have. I, I hate I hate seeing, uh, I just hate seeing so many things being 3D printed when, you can, when they could easily be handmade. Um, that goes with uh, laser cutting, too. Like, I can't stand when people laser cut wood when they can easily cut it themselves with a saw. It just looks nasty, and it's kind of like a cop-out for manual labor, you know? It's, it gets more rewarding when you do it with your own hands. That's what I think, anyways. I'm not trying to offend anyone. But I would love to have a 3D printer for a few reasons. One, really small parts that you really can't hand make. And then uh, probably some custom pieces for random projects that are kind of hard to make yourself. Um, I just hate seeing them being overused in certain projects. It's, it gets kind of overwhelming. But I understand it, though. Like, if you had one, if I had one, I'd probably use it for a bunch of stuff, too. But it's just kind of, kind of annoying to see. But like I said, I do understand it. So we got those wires on. Yeah, there you go. I 
also want to get a new soldering iron too. Um, I meant to buy a uh, thing called a hacko a while ago, but I just never got around to it. Uh, they have a soldering station that's like a hundred dollars or something on Amazon, and I meant to buy that a while ago, but I just never got around to it. I've been using this fairly decent soldering iron. It's like it doesn't. Well, I paid like forty bucks for this one, and it works quite well, for, and it does what I need it to do. But I just want a hacko because it just looks awesome, and it has some really good reviews and. Adjustable, which would be nice. It's all to come, though. I also have a... I actually had a Teespring campaign that was launched a while ago. Um, and it just ended. I didn't reach my goal, but I did... Kinda. I got... I sold 16 shirts, which kinda sucks. I was hoping for 50. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was hoping for 50, but I only sold 16. I actually just got my shirt in the mail yesterday. If you believe it or not, this video took three days to record because I've been, like, really busy. Um, but I just got my shirt yesterday, and I plan on relaunching it so I can, uh, because it was kind of my, my bad on that. Um, I plan on relaunching it, but giving more of a description behind it because I only, I didn't really describe or put a lot of information into the description, and that's probably what didn't sell it. But my main goal with that is to fund a bigger project I hope to get um, a patent for later on. Um, so I'm not releasing a lot of information on that, but if the goal is met, which I think it's like 50 shirts, 200 and some odd dollars, uh, if the goal is met, then I have more than enough money to start a prototype for it, for uh, the product I want to make, start a prototype for it, and then get... Then I'll work out the rest of the details later. Because this is a project I've been working on for a while. And, um, I think a majority of people will find cool, but I just have to add more information into the Teespring campaign because that definitely was missing when I launched the first one. But it was actually a really cool shirt design that I came up with. It is a... Uh, I'll show you my shirt in a second. It is a diode... It's kind of like cheeky humor, corny humor, to say the least. It's a uh, it's a shirt that has a elect an electronic component on it, a diode, and uh, the caption is the original the original One Direction. So I thought that was pretty funny, and I even had a share from Electro Boom, the Dice Cigar. He uh, does videos. He's quite popular. He's hilarious as hell. He does videos of his own, and uh, he he does it with. So much personality, it's just amazing to watch. He's a really great guy. He uh, does his own videos on uh, how-tos and whatnot. And his most famous one is how to make an electric guitar or whatever. That one was hilarious. He actually shared it for me, and it got quite a bit of shares. It got a lot of shares, but not not nearly enough in sales, which kind of sucks. But then again, can't really blame anyone because the, the information was missing, so that probably would have helped a little bit. But yeah, I'll let you know when I relaunch it, if you're interested. But I also have another t-shirt design I want to launch at the same time to hopefully uh, increase my odds of selling. It'd be really nice. But like I said, I'll definitely include more information in the next one. The next two, actually. Alright, so I got my interception wires soldered up find another set right here and these are going to go into the router and modem power supply so I'm going to do that next all right so I got my router and modem power supplies here um, they're actually both rated at the same voltage and current and uh, both plugs are universal so it doesn't matter if I get confused and mix them up so that was pretty cool so right here right here I have um, this one is the router power supply uh, I think it's like 12 volts, 1 amp. Yeah. And then uh, we have the adapter right here. I just went and snipped it because why not? And make sure my wall power supply's off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one output of the relays and solder it to one and solder it to the positives of the router and modem. Um, I'll 
probably give you a better example of that later. But right now, we're just going to intercept uh, the positive of the uh, it's the router right now. So we're just going to intercept the positive wire of the router, uh, basically making a weird Y cable, or technically an X cable, I guess. So not to confuse anyone, so we have four spare four wires right here, and the positive wire is the one with the white on it. Nine times out of ten, it's the one with the white. If you really want, you can check the uh, output of it and make sure. So there's the stripped end. And this one right here as well. So here's the strip end. So we're going to add the output wires of the relay to both of these wires right here. Um, pretty straightforward, but sorry about that. Since this is permanent, I'd like to not screw anything up or get anything forever tangled. So. Um, so I kind of don't have an idea figured out for how to power the 555 timer and whatnot. Um, it runs on 5 volts or whatever. But I came up with an idea. My TV actually has a USB port on the back of it along with my cable box as well. So I'll probably just plug it in one of those because it's probably not a lot of current output. So I'll probably be safe that way. I'll probably go with my TV because I don't know would never ever use the out the uh, TV USB for anything. All right, so twist these wires together, um, positive, just intercepting positive again. Twist these wires together along with this one. I'll I guess I'll uh, draw up a quick picture of this on my whiteboard to give you a better idea once this is all said and done. Cause it'll probably probably clear up a bit of confusion if there is any. Like that, and time for solder. So I guess you're not missing out on a bunch of soldering. I mean, when I was watching how-to videos, uh, my favorite part was watching people solder for some weird reason. It's like an art. I don't know. It's pretty weird. Uh, I'm kind of new to this whole how-to tutorial thing, vlogging stuff. So any comments or suggestions, just feel free to let me know. I mean, I've been doing um, tutorials for a while now, though. I mean, I had an Instructables account. I uh, gave up on that for the most part, though. I mean, I kind of got annoyed that a bunch of my stuff wasn't getting looked at. I probably talked about this before, but it just seemed like a majority of my stuff was getting swept under the rug, which I'm not saying all my stuff was better than whatever else was on there, but it just got really annoying because uh, one thing that really irritated me was I made a how to make a USB OTG cable and um, it got a fair amount of views and uh, a lot of people seem to like it, a few people seem to like it, not a lot uh, they commented on it and whatnot. And uh, I thought I thought it was one of the best ones on there because it gave a it gave a better um, it just gave a better detailed way of making an OTG cable using a, a normal micro USB and whatnot. And I thought it was one of the best ones on there, but it didn't get a lot of a lot of attention, and, uh, which I'm kind of used to in that aspect. Cause like I said, the majority of my project got stuck under the rug on that website. But after about a month or two, I am subscribed to uh, Facebook on, I'm subscribed to Instructables on Facebook. You know, I follow all their posts and whatnot. And, uh, one thing that irritated me was I was on Facebook scrolling through my news feed and I saw Instructables and they shared an Instructable of how to make an OTG cable. wasn't mine, but it was not to insult the author, just poorly done and there was a lot of grammatical errors and everything and it was just, it was, it just, you know, it kind of, kind of ticked me off, which I guess is understandable to some extent because it's like you did it but they won't give you credit for it, but they'll show the one that's worse. And it just kind of, it just kind of irritated me. So that's why I'm kind of done with that website. Um, last instructable I did was how to make a micro USB to a lightning cable adapter. 
Uh, that was my last one because I kind of thought that would, um, kind of thought that would get some attention too, but it didn't. So I just kind of said, screw it. After that, I'm done. Like it got that website kind of gave me my start though with, um, how to. So I guess it's not all that bad. But just seeing all your work gets up under the rug and barely any notoriety just kind of hurts. So it kind of, kind of kills your motivation on that website, but. I still go to the website though, I still read the comments and reply to them and all the other stuff from people who like my work, but I think I'm done with that website for now, making stuff wise. It also seems like they feature a select group group of authors, like that's another thing I don't like, it's like they cater to people who who've already been featured or something like that. And it's not it's not bad, but then again you're kinda of missing out on new stuff and other people, so it's kinda of, I don't know, it's just kind of, I think, kind of sucks, my opinion. Um, I still like the site, though. I still like going on there and looking at other people's destructibles. I still like the authors, other authors who uh, put in the effort for their work. I still do appreciate that website and everything it's done for me, but it's time to move on from that website, though. I mean, that's for sure. Um, so I just started a Hackaday account, so I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff on there and uh, also on here, obviously, and... I plan on kickstarting my N64 portable build really soon. I've been saying this for a while now, but I think it's necessary to get it going because I like I like the idea of it, uh, what I've had of it so far. But it's kind of sitting right now. I haven't really progressed on it much because I've had a lot of stuff to do. But the biggest thing with uh, making it any gaming console portable is a battery pack or a battery of some sort, some power supply to make it portable. And I came up with this really, really awesome idea on how to have a 13.2 amp hour battery smaller than your, probably smaller than your cell phone. So I'm going to be using that for uh, my N64 portable along with other things. Because it's just like a really, really cool idea. And I came up with it's, I can't really go into detail of it because I kind of want to explain it, but it's really, really cool and it works well. And it's just it's just awesome and it has a really really long run time so that will be probably coming up in a while I know there's been quite a bit of n64 portables out there but I want to do a really detailed video of mine because um, I've, I've uh, followed a bunch of people who made theirs and or people wanted to make some and they just couldn't find detailed instructions or whatever so I figured when I make mine I'm gonna do I'm going to cover everything as good as I can. I don't care how long that video is. Um, because I think, I just think it's something that someone would want to get a lot of information on. So when I do mine, I'm going to cover everything. I'm going to make my own audio amp. Um, pretty much everything from scratch. And I'm just going to cover every everything down to the finest detail just to avoid any confusion. Because there's uh, quite a few portables that are shown off online and there's really no information behind how to make them that's that's what kind of that's what i don't like is how there's no information behind it so i'm going to hopefully my goal is to make and make a how-to on how to make one and make it as informative as possible Sorry, I just hit my tripod. Yep. I'm not used to having a tripod right next to me. It's kind of it's weird. All right, sorry about that. Video cut out, but... Um, yeah, not missing much. I, the video just stopped recording for some reason on my camera. Right after I hit the tripod, so that's probably why. Some, some other reason. Uh, but right now I have the relay inputs all together and after I insulate the wires, the exposed wires, I'm going to go out to my living room and test it out and see if it works. I really don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, at all I don't see why it wouldn't work. But there's always a possibility for error. Um, there's always room for errors in anything. So gotta account for that. Never expect anything to go perfectly because probably won't. 
Uh, the more hopes you have for it going perfectly, the more likely you're going to run into some failures. So, all right. Uh, I was going to use heat heat shrink tubing for insulation, but I didn't want to spend how much how much uh, the stores I saw it at was asking for. I just wanted a few pieces of heat shrink, and like they were asking thirteen dollars for a whole case, and I don't want a whole case. I'll probably get my use out of it though, but. As much as I'm cutting into wires and whatnot on a daily basis, I don't want to uh, burn through heat shrink that fast. Alright, so I got everything insulated, so we're going to move to my living room right now and see if it works. Alright, so I ran into a roadblock, unfortunately, but with electronics you kind of have to expect that. Um, like I said, there's always something that could go wrong in the previous clip, so ironically, and of course, something did go wrong. Um, I tried, I wired up everything to my routers and modem, router and modem, and um, I cut into their positive and I put the wires in just right, and for some reason, it would reset itself every once in a while, and this obviously cannot be acceptable because, you know, you don't want a router to turn off and on by itself, especially if you're not commanding it. So, um, I did a little bit of research, and what I can come up with is, I think, um, using two relays in parallel might have been a bad idea, might have not worked, something might have went wrong there. Um, another thing was there was noise, electrical noise, and then another thing I found out was the, when the uh, coil was charged, um, it actually activated the um, receiver, which triggered, which uh, then triggered the monostable output again. So there was actually a few things in play there. So now um, I'm back to the drawing board a little bit, uh, two steps behind, nothing too bad though, and i got to figure out a new way to do this without cutting into the uh, DC part, and I'm only using one relay. So, what I'm doing is I'm using one relay to act to control the main, so 110 voltage I'm going to control. Um, these relays are rated at 120 volts, 10 amps, so I can get away with it, but I just didn't want to do that because of the, I didn't want to uh, get... Uh, tap into the AC part because the pins are so small, but now I have no choice. And uh, right now I got everything wired up to one relay, as you can see right here dangling. Uh, its wires, its output wires are actually going to, I'll show you real fast. Its output wires are actually going to my overhead light from my desk. And uh, right now, right now uh, the, the relay is going to my light instead of anything else. So if this so far has been proven to work better because it's not resetting, the light's not going off for 30 seconds coming back on. So this seems to be the more um, achievable solution and easier step is to take the AC mains and control it with one relay instead of the DC with two relays. So right now is the test. Um, I've had this actually wired up for about a half hour and it hasn't reset itself. So right now it's already proven to work. So. I will push the transmi transmitter button, the receiver will receive it, and the lights will go off for 30 seconds approximately, and the red LED will go on. So it's going to get dark, um, but you'll see the red LED. So a little bit of a uh, setback, but nothing too major. I just had to find a way to control uh, the AC before it goes into the transformers on the uh, for the router and modem, which shouldn't be too hard. I have I have something lying around that I could probably hack a little bit. Oops, this guy right here. Um, is this guy right here. I've had this for a long time now. It is a... It, obviously, it's a three outlet for one. One outlet, so I'll plug... What I'll do is I'll plug the router transformer and the modem transformer into this, and then I'll run the AC part through the relay, and uh, I'll be able to control it with this. And I'll unscrew this and see if there's anything I can solder to, because these don't have holes for... Uh, they don't have holes, so I can't really tap in that way. So this is probably this is probably what's going to take over as uh, controlling the AC part. But um, we'll test it out right now, and here we go. Another issue I think it was it could have been the uh, adapter I was using for the power supply for the relays. I changed that up to I got a 12 volt wall wart instead instead of the 9 volt that was for some reason 14. So could have been an issue, but I'm still going with the AC mains part because I don't want to. I don't want to have to troubleshoot more stuff. So it should turn back on in a few seconds after the 30 second monostable output. Alright, there you go. So this way seems a lot more promising than any other way. So 
Um, I'm gonna go over this again a little bit more, but for right now I'm gonna finish wiring this up a little bit nicer, and I'm gonna, then I'm gonna tap into this guy right here and see if I can solder to anything on that, because that'll definitely help out a little bit. So, a little bit of a setback. Like I said, what you have to expect though is in electronics. It's uh, any other field too, you have to expect some roadblocks. So, moving forward, not looking back. I think that. Um, I actually found this power strip lying amongst all my stuff. I'm, I'm using this instead of the three outlet I showed you earlier. Um, reason why it was just a lot easier to tap into, as you can see right here, I tapped into the uh, live wire and added it to the relay instead of running it through this thing right here, which I'm only using this to connect to my uh, extension cord because it has, uh, this extension cord has an earth on it, so I have to accommodate for that or ground, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I tapped into this. It's a bit of overkill because I only need two outlets, uh, modem and router, but I had it. It was, I think this one was free. It's old as hell, so I'm not really missing out on anything there. And plus, if I get anything else in the future that needs to be reset with routers and modems, there you go. More space, the better. And then over here we have the receiver, the 555 circuit with the monostable setup, um, the 5 volt rail coming out, and what you can't see is the uh, 12 volt power supply that's plugged into my power strip on my workbench. So, um, for now, testing purposes, I'm going to plug in my overhead light into the power strip. And this is going to be the same test you saw before, but a more finalized, formal look. And just a lot better looking. Then we, then we have my extension cord right here which just goes to my power strip again. This just goes to my power strip on my workbench. I'm gonna plug this into the power strip, this power strip. This one's a little bit finicky though. I think some of the, the connectors are wiggly in there, so hopefully it works for testing purposes. All right, so now I'm gonna flip the switch and you can see quite vibrantly the light on my workbench, which is up there, you can't see that. Uh, light on my workbench comes on. So now, uh, so now the um, relay is in the closed position, which allows the AC to flow through the relay. Um, so for testing, we want to activate the relay. We want to charge the coils of the relay, which will then break the contact. So I have to um, find my transmitter first, which shouldn't be hard. Apparently is. I just finished cleaning up my, my workbench a little bit, so I might have misplaced it. I gotta find it real fast. Should only take a second. Keep you waiting while I look. Oh shit! This is a thing I like to do to myself. I this is my theory I have. Um, I theorize that I like to misplace stuff in the present to piss off my future self. Um, that theory holds a lot of weight, though. I, it really does. I believe it 100% when it comes to certain things. <clears throat> For example, um, a couple weeks ago, I went to go see Bo Burnham in concert. And uh, I had these tickets for a while. They were a Christmas, uh, Christmas gift or a birthday present. One of the two, they're my birthday and Christmas, really close. Um, but they were a gift, and I, just, I knew I had to put my glasses somewhere so I would make sure to bring them with me to the Bo Burnham concert. And the night before the concert, I lost them, and I found them in my girlfriend's car. Never would have thought of putting them there, but that's the theory. I do stuff to piss my future self off, which um, is common with me for some reason. But I'm going to finish looking for this, and I'll be right back. Alright, so about three seconds later from that previous clip, I was right on the floor. Dumbass moment. Anyways, moving on, those happen. Um... To recap that second, uh, three second ago clip, um, nothing's changed. I got the my overhead light plugged in the AC power strip. The AC power strip has a relay, which is then triggered by the monostable timer. And I have made a few additions to the circuit, so I will go over it again in depth on my whiteboard. Um, I had to modify things a bit, like obviously I had to get rid of the, one of the relays. So don't worry, I'll go over the finalized circuit uh, once this video is done. 
so you can get a better idea of it. I also had to add a diode to the relay, which uh, helped out quite a bit. So again, I'll go over it again and uh, give you a better, uh, better explanation of how everything works and and whatnot. And hopefully, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, if you have a question, I might not be able to answer. Hopefully, someone in the comments will. So without further ado, um, I will test it out again. Uh, same test as before, except this time, like I said, it's a lot nicer. I got the power strip instead of just tapping into the mains, and I got the relay over here, which I'll probably mount on the power strip to avoid any electrical noise from the components, because that actually was an issue um, before, which was really weird. Um, it happens, though. Like I said, uh, with electronics and pretty much any other field of interest, hobby, or whatever you want to choose for a career, there's always going to be little roadblocks to kind of divert you, and they're not bad. They're more often than not a learning experience. Uh, you learn what not to do the next time. So you take what you take what uh, caused you to screw up and you learn from it. So it's kind of a positive thing. It's kind of cool I got that on camera because nothing is perfect and that's a misconception. You gotta pretty much anticipate failure. So don't don't expect everything to run perfectly. So here is the transmitter. There is receiver circuit and timer. So one click and then 30 seconds. Um, I also have my work light on, um, my work, work room light on, so it's not going to be completely dark this time. But once uh, the 30 second duty cycle runs up, the mono stable pulse will, you know, return as ground, and then the relay will click back to the normal closed position after the coil is done being energized, and then uh, the AC will flow to the light. Uh, I will admit this was a kind of a tricky project. I didn't anticipate this many little road bumps. Like I said, they do happen. So. There's that, and just for timing, it landed on 2.30, so I'm going to see if it ends at 3, just to just to see if um, it's actually 30 seconds, because stuff happened and whatnot, and I wouldn't be surprised if the cycle got changed around a bit, but hopefully it didn't. This should, should be 30 seconds still, I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it is, and then I'll find a case to throw it all in. So we're at 58 right now. Yep, so there you go, right on the dot. So cool. Um, so it all works, and we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and find a case and throw everything in. One thing I would do differently, and one thing I would recommend you doing differently if you do do this, is to get a power supply you can use to power the timer and the relays. That I hate, because I have a five volt power supply powering the timer circuit, and then a nine volt, 12 volt power supply powering the relay so it kind of sucks using two power sources or uh, power so, yeah, power sources and then uh, takes up more room later on but shouldn't be a big of an issue because I got this big thing right here I can put on the wall so um, that's one thing I would recommend doing differently another thing is to be safe while doing this cause, um, since I'm in mains right now mains voltage I kind of did I wanted to avoid that territory but it had to happen so um, it should be heavily implied. Do this at your own risk, and don't do this if you are just starting out with electronics, especially anything with mains voltage. It's 110 volts. Not really that much compared to high, high voltage, but it still is a lot. Do some damage. So, you know, take warning and be careful when doing this. So I'm going to go get a case and stuff the timer circuit and the relay, uh, the timer circuit and the receiver and the relay I'll find somewhere to put. And uh, yeah, well, that should be should be about it. Then I'll go over the circuit again on my whiteboard and clear up um, some mistakes and show you the new additions to it, such as the diode, which is I soldered the diode directly to the relay because I was because uh, I could really. Um, you can't really see it. I'll I'll get a picture of that though, but it's it's there. I'll show you the the diode in place as well and the polarity of it and all that stuff. So um, case time. So I was looking around for a case, and I came across this one. Uh, it's a little tackle box thing I bought. It was like $3. Um, I, I kind of buy these every once in a while because I figure I'm going to use them. And uh, this actually is the same case I used to build my NES portable in. So why not? Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be like really small and compact, but I figured... I have it, it's free. That's the only thing I really care about right now is not spending a lot of money on this. It's free and uh, I wanna space out the timer and the receiver circuit just because I don't want any interference like I had when I was testing it, which seemed to be prominent quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll lay out the circuit boards. 
Um, I'm not going to drill any holes for any components or wires. I'm just going to make some channels for them later so I can uh, pretty much just run them as is instead of desoldering them and whatnot. Because I don't want to have to do that. Um, one thing I like about these cheap tackle carrier things is that they are very easy to cut. And uh, they are actually pretty sturdy too, but since they're so easy to cut, they're actually really easy to break as well. So you want to be a little careful with that. Right, the timer circuit fits pretty good. This project actually has quite a bit of bulk to it, and I'm not too thrilled about that. I mean, I got both circuits, then uh, both circuits, the power strip, the wall wart, and the other wall wart for the 5 volts. So I'm not too thrilled on how big this thing turned out to be, but like I said earlier, the things I would do different would be to use one power supply for the relay and timer circuit. Um, just get like a good 5 volt regulator, not a linear, no 7805, uh, just like a, stand, like a nice switching mode power regulator to uh, give us a really, really good, um, really, really good regulation because I see 7805s used in everything, and they work to a certain extent, but they don't work on everything. Uh, I already know it wouldn't have worked on this, because there would have just been way too much heat dissipation, and it probably would have fried out eventually, or not fried. Some of them have thermal protection, but it would have, wouldn't have lasted as long as it could have, and probably would have shut off eventually and just turned back on, and just not efficient. So that's why I like to stay away from those as much as I can. Unless unless I'm using it in a practical situation, like uh, something simple that doesn't have a lot of current or a very, very significant voltage drop. Or something along the lines that doesn't produce a lot of heat, which is what those things are known best for. Alright, so right now I'm just laying out the components. Um, I may eventually get a different case for this. I don't see why not. Um, I just went with what I had, and eventually, if I feel as if an upgrade is necessary, I will do so, but I am actually kind of liking how this turns out, turned out, because timer circuit fit perfectly. And, uh, after this is done, this clip, like I said before, I will go over the finalized circuit again on my whiteboard, show you everything I edited, and, uh, whatnot. And also, feel free to mess around with this circuit, you know, like, experiment with it. Alright, so everything fits. Alright, so now... So I need one channel to run all the wires from, and I'll do that over here. I'll just use my handy-dandy hobby knife. And I'll just do some cuts this way. Sometimes I expect these things to do more than they should, strength-wise. Like, I've cut metal with them, and it works, but it's also extremely dangerous because they break and they splinter off, and that's scary as hell because you definitely don't want that going anywhere. Nothing, like, insanely strong metal-wise, but something it definitely shouldn't be handling. Cause I'm kind of minimalistic when it comes to my uh, tool resources. I don't have a lot. I have... I have what I have and I make it work, but sometimes I wish I had a little more. Such as, like, one thing I would love to have would be a, definitely be a 3D printer, even though I'm against those, which is stupid. Hypocrisy is what makes the world go around. But I uh, definitely would have a 3D printer simply because they're useful for a lot of things. Um, I, I just don't like 3D printers because a lot of how-to sites expect you to have one. And I know there are... Um, outsourcing things like you can actually go get it printed from someone else and pay for it and whatnot, but it's just kind of annoying. But still an option. I mean, I like hands on work more than I would probably using a 3D printer. But there's an actual really cheap 3D printer that's coming out. If uh, it's Kickstarter, it was meant it's like $170 or something like that, which I plan to get. Really cool to have. Another dab of hot glue on the receiver because jump it around. I don't want to use too much hot glue because I want to be able to take it apart without ripping anything up. Which is always 
always a good idea. So there's that. So there is that in the case. Relatively easy. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it out in my living room and give it a final test, and then I'll mount the relay wherever I see fit. Um, the relay will prob probably go somewhere towards the power strip or wherever I see fit that will make it uh, a nice and easy fit. So let's get that part going. should be easy, hopefully. Okay, so here's my router and modem. Uh, there's the router. As you can see, it's ticking away, and there's the modem. As you can see, it's ticking away. Um, I got my reset right up here by my Roku behind the TV. Uh, probably find a better spot for it later, but for right now that will suffice. And then down here, a whole mess of wires and some dog hair. Apologize for that. But um, uh, this is our normal power strip we use to have the TV, the cable box, and all the other crap plugged in. And right here is the power strip I modified to have the relay circuit. And uh, it's got the router and modem power supply right there. And I mounted the relay right on it so it's a good distance away from everything else so it won't get any electrical noise, which apparently is a thing that happens to relays, which kind of offset, which kind of offsets them. But yeah, um, here is the transmitter right here. And I guess time for a test. See it actually working to serve its purpose. So relay and a modem right there. And for accuracy, why not even get my timer out? Let's see if we got 30 seconds. Because there was a lot of movement, so I don't know, like, uh, timing got disrupted or whatever, or some stupid signal or whatever. Can't account, gotta, can't account for everything, so get my timer set up. As you can see, I already had it. So I'll click and push. There's my timer right there. Everything's off. And uh, relays right there, the circuit. Red LED's going, so that means it's monostable outputting. And there's the timer right there. So hopefully at 30 seconds we should have everything back on. Roughly, because I did tap it a little weird. Right, yeah, there it goes. Everything kicks back on within 30 seconds, the suggested reset time for most routers and modems. Um, so yeah, there's that. That, and the reset is off. So, everything works. So uh, right now we can go back to the whiteboard and I'll show you the finalized circuit and everything I did to modify it to make it work better. So let's get that part done. Okay, so this is the finalized circuit, the one you just saw completed. Um, like I said, there's always, always room for error in any project, no matter how little, and especially no matter how big. Um, so I had to make a few minor adjustments that kind of, div like, uh, kind of drove away from the original plan, but it all still works. Um, everything in the 555 timer circuit is exactly the same as it, as it was before. The only thing changing is the relay and the method of controlling the router and modem, which... Not that big of a, uh, really not that big of a diversion, but still, it happened. Alright, so on the relay, you can see there's only one relay, and uh, there's a diode now parallel with the relay. And uh, there's also a power strip instead of the router and modem um, DC that I tried controlling. So what happens now is the live wire from the power strip is the red one, represented by the red, red line on the whiteboard. So the power strip is ran through the relay and uh, is normally closed. So, unless the timer circuit's activated, the power strip is still giving power to the router and modem. So, so, for, so when you push the button on the transmitter from the doorbell, the receiver picks up the signal as it normally should, and it'll go to the 2N3904 on pin two, that'll pull the ground, that'll set the monostable output, which is 30 seconds, roughly, and uh, the output will go through pin three, through the, through the resistor, through the diode, to the base of the TIP32 transistor, which will then close, um, which will then close the relay to ground, which will allow the coil to be energized, which will then push away the switch. And once the switch is pushed away, the switch will be pushed away for 30 seconds, exactly, or roughly. And um, once that's happening, the power from the router and modem will be cut because the power from the east power strip will be cut. So it's a fairly simple circuit. A little bit of 
a little bit of error mixed in. I had to, like I said, I had to accommodate for some things, but all works a lot better. The diode helps with uh, the coil when it discharges. Uh, I found that out. I kind of surprised I missed that. I'm so stupid. But that happened. Uh, the diode's there now. Um, diode's not really necessary. I found it worked and it didn't work, so I just added the diode because it worked more often than it would without it. There was a few errors and glitches, but the diode stabilized everything, so uh, that worked. Again, it's just a standard rectifier diode, nothing special. Um, I heard Zener diodes are work a lot better for, for that, so if you have it lying around, use it. Um, I just used what I had on hand. So this is the entire project, very few components, and that is it. That's it for this video. Um, sorry if there's any confusion. I know I repeat myself a lot. I am new to this uh, how-to tutorial crap when it comes to videos, and I kind of want to get... Um, bigger projects going because it's kind of relieving and stress stress relieving when I do this kind of stuff because it's like meditation to me. So um, if you have any recommendations for future projects or comments, uh, criticisms, go ahead and leave them in the comments. So subscribe if you want to. And yeah, um, I'll link my Hackaday post. I'll link my Hackaday post because uh, I'm going to be doing a Hackaday on this. So I'll have everything written down. So if you guys want to head over there to read it and get a better understanding. Plus the circuit will be better because I'll draw that on my computer so you can actually see that and I won't be my handwriting that'll make it all squiggly. So that'll be there. Um, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and uh, hopefully you stay tuned for the next one. And I will link my Teespring campaigns. I told you about that a little bit ago, but I will link those. I will link those a little bit later and uh, you can check those out. Um, the one Teespring campaign actually just closed and didn't meet its goal, but 16 shirts were sold, so I, I still got the one I bought. So technically 15 were sold because I bought one because I wanted one. Um, so I'll link those once those are up and running. Um, little electro electronics humor involved in the shirts and everything. Also, I'll link my Facebook page below so you can follow me on there. And that's about it. Enough talking. Thanks for watching.